So it started out as a Radio 2 programme. Now you've been taking it out on the road, Bob. How's it going? Yeah, we're up to about 10 now, and we've got quite a few ahead of us. Um, and it's been going really well. We're doing Liverpool on Friday, which is a complete sellout. And uh, yeah, it's really good. Well, let's talk about it. And tell me about Colin. How did you and Colin Hall meet up? Uh, we met at the Cambridge Folk Festival, probably in 2006, I think it would have been. And uh, Colin invited me up to Liverpool because he was the custodian of John Lennon's childhood home, Mendips, on Menlove Avenue in Liverpool. And he invited me up to see the house because Yoko had bought the house and then donated it to the National Trust. And between them, they'd restored it to exactly the way it was when John lived there in the 50s. So I went to the house and I was absolutely amazed Stepping back into this time capsule, the experience of going back into my childhood, really, because I, I was a child in the 50s. And there were photographs there of John in his school uniform with his cap and uh, his satchel and long trousers and uh, sock high. <laughs> and that was me. It was all of us in the 50s. We all kind of looked like that, yeah. you know. They were, they were all singles scattered across the bed and... It was just an incredible experience. I recommend it to anyone going to Mendel. I was going to say, we went up there last year and also to Paul's house just down the road. And, yeah. and the, the difference well, was quite interesting to see the two, the way they both grew up in different sort of houses. Well, yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, John always portrayed himself as the working class hero. But actually, his upbringing was quite middle class. Whereas Paul, you always got the feeling that Paul was quite middle class. But actually, his upbringing was more working class, you know, that, that terminology that existed in those days. Now, you interviewed all the Beatles, didn't you, in your time uh, across various media? Yeah. And I was I was relating, I was talking on the show earlier this week about your interview with John Lennon, which was in America, wasn't it? The big one. Yes, it was in New York. It was in 1975. It was amazing the way it came about also because Alton John and I were very good friends to that point. And... Um, I was attending a uh, LaBelle single release showcase for the release of the single Lady Marmalade. And uh, I was a bit late arriving and I was just going down the stairs into the venue and Elton was coming up the stairs and we stopped and had a chat on the stairs and he said, I'm, I'm going to New York. Uh, I'm leaving in a couple of days time. He said, you know, I've got this run of dates at Madison Square Garden. And he said, don't tell anybody, but um, I think John Lennon's going to be joining me on stage. So, and of course, famously, he did. It was the whatever gets you through the night performance. You know, it's so famous. Very glib. I was very glib. I said, uh, well, you know, when you see John, just tell him we'd love to do something with him on Whistle Test. Just, you know, tell him to give us a call or something. I was in the office at um, Television Center early the following week, and the phone goes, and Mike Appleton, the um, producer of Whistle Test, picked the phone up and said, hello, old grey Whistle Test, you know, and uh, had this voice at the other end of the phone going, no, it's Bob Harris said, please. And uh, Mike goes, who's calling? And he said, it's John Lennon. <laughs> he passed the phone over to me and uh, John said, I've just been talking to Alton, you know, come over. I've got the rock and roll album coming out and, uh, you know, it'd be great. So that's what happened. Uh, and I went over to New York, Mike and I went over, we spent three days with John and it was the most incredible experience. He just, he and Yoko had just discovered that she was pregnant with Sean. So John, John was so happy. Um, and he got his lost weekend out of the way. He'd come back to New York. He wanted to settle now. He was in a very, very calm and, and lovely, happy state. And that's how we did the interview. It's like, we kind of transcended, to be honest, it wasn't. It, almost immediately, we just found ourselves as two guys who'd met who really liked each other. You know, he wasn't John Lennon of the Beatles in inverted commas, and I wasn't, you know, Bob Harris, the old grey whistle test. We were just two guys who had met now and just really got on. And the interview itself is so relaxed. And I think you sense that almost camaraderie that we'd already established when you watched the interview. <laughs>
Let's talk a little bit about what's happening on Saturday night. How's it going to work with you two on stage? Oh, it's just a parallel thing. We bounce. Um, I don't question Colin. Uh, in fact, I've got all the clips and the archive and everything else. So I sort of drive the evening because I know where and when things are going to fall in. Because what we've done is we're basically basing the evening on the documentary program we did together for Radio 2, the songs the Beatles gave away. There were nearly 30 of them all together, and um, we tell the story of those songs. So it's between us that we tell those stories. But Colin, the depth of his knowledge is just out beyond belief. So I just trigger him every now and again, and off he goes. You know, it's uh, um, we begin at the beginning kind of thing with the first song that John gave away, or a song that he contributed to. And then we just tell the stories of the songs as we go through the decade. So you've got things like um, Love of the Love, Step Inside Love, World Without Love. Um, some of the work that Paul did with Sir George Martin and with Chris Barber, um, George Harrison and Eric Papson towards the end, Mary Hopkin. And there's the most beautiful ever demo of Cilla Black. I don't want to give too much away, but okay. <laughs> so, so gorgeous. Um, so... Every one of those songs has a story to it, and we tell those stories on stage. Well, we can't wait. Uh, Villa Marina, well, Villa Gaiety Arcade, it's a beautiful setting with a mighty Wurlitzer in the background there. And um, we'll at 7.30 this Saturday. Bob, you and uh, Colin, safe travels, because at the time of recording, we've got a Storm Agnes going through the, uh, the Irish Sea at the moment, so it's going to get a bit blowy tonight, but it should be over by the time we see you. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, Absolutely. Lovely to catch up with you. Bob Harris, thank you. Cheers, Mark. Step inside, love. Let me find you a place Where the curse of the day will be carried away By the smile on your face We are together now and forever 